joining me live is Peter Matthews, Professor of Political Science at Cyprus College. Big news, Professor. Also, Microsoft looking at uh, buying a portion of TikTok. Yes, and that would probably give President Trump uh, the reason to say, OK, TikTok can remain in the United States, can still have activity here, because millions of people are on it, and I mean, especially young people. And that could have a, reverber a rever reverberating effect if you bans it, especially for the election. So I think Microsoft will try its best. It's negotiating now to be able to take it over, at least the portion that's in the United States. And that would be a plus for Trump in a sense. We know the uh, president is a fan of social media. U.S. president's campaign account to Professor was temporarily banned from Twitter after it violated rules on COVID-19. Misinformation claiming children are, are virtually immune from COVID-19. What's the reaction been? It's been horrendous because uh, that's complete disinformation, misinformation. Children are very much affected by COVID-19. The latest studies are showing that the youngest children under five years old actually have between 10 and 100 times the amount of the virus in their noses. So that's, it could be infectious as well. And uh, children between 10 and 19 actually infect other people at the same rate as adults. All those things are clearly science. And President Trump put out misinformation, if not disinformation about that. It's very dangerous. He wants people to go back to school, kids to go back to school. That's the problem without real safety uh, considerations fully. Yes, well, that debate continues, doesn't it, uh, whether the schools are ready to uh, reopen. Also, uh, Professor, a Reuters tally reported more than 160,000 people have died from the COVID-19 pandemic in the US, which is close to a quarter of the world's total. So some alarming statistics, considering we're also hearing this week uh, testing rates for COVID-19 have dropped in the US, even though infections remain high. Yes, and that's also a huge problem because... When you have 160,000 people, more than that, dying in this country, that's more than so many tragedies like the 9-11, for example, many, many times more than the 9-11 tragedy. And furthermore, furthermore, 5 million, over 5 million Americans are infected, and the death rates are going up in many, many states, and the positivity rates going up. So it is a horrendous situation that's due to a lack of early intervention, as well as a lack of massive testing, contact tracing, and quarantining, as you're doing in Australia and other countries have done. So we need to really get on this and get under control. And President Trump is not taking it very seriously, unfortunately. And that's the major negative reaction in the voting patterns of the polling area for the presidential race against him because of that, for one thing. Uh, Professor, the number of people claiming unemployment benefits in the United States is above one million for the 20th straight week. The benefits of $600 a week have ceased. Is there any word on if there will be more benefits? There definitely needs to be, and it was a $600 per week benefit that was helping keep a lot of people afloat to pay their rent, their home mortgages, for example. That's been, they've been without it for two weeks now. People, 30 million Americans unemployed right now have been without that extra amount of money for two weeks. And many t uh, landlords and tenants are having a trouble reaching agreement on that. So the, the thing is that the Republicans and Democrats cannot seem to agree fully on how it has to be done. The Democrats passed a bill way back in May, $3.4 trillion dollars. That would have included uh, the $600 per week, plus a lot of other things, including aid for schools, for testing and other kinds of things dealing with coronavirus and with the uh, employment picture. And the Democrats wanted to keep people to stay home as opposed to go out there and infect other people. The Republicans, led by President Trump, seem to think that, you know, people should be able to go back to work. And if you give them too much money, they won't go to go to work. That's also been just disproven by an economic study that was done recently that showed that there's no uh, correlation whatsoever between whether people got that extra money or went to work or wanted to go to work. So this is a misunderstanding and it's something that's very detrimental uh, to the United States as a whole and to our people and the condition that we're in right now. Absolutely. I was reading a couple of studies as well and on a whole it said that people were spending more and as a result helping to sustain the US economy in general. Let's talk about the election, November yeah. 3. The delay on the announcement, Professor, of Joe Biden's running mate. What's the latest? We're hearing Kamala Harris. Harris is a top contender. I would think it's between Kamala Harris and possibly Susan Rice. Uh, and we, we don't know exactly yet. It'll only be up to Biden to let us know next week. But some of the people on the inside, confidants of Biden, have floated the idea that he, they've heard, they seem, yeah, said they've heard, that those two, it's been narrowed down to those two, but we don't know. There are several other possibilities. I do believe it'll be an African-American woman because of the times or calls for it and the pledge that Biden made to, to get a woman uh, vice presidential nominee. I think it's a fantastic idea to help him galvanize the base of support and many other people to vote that wouldn't normally vote. So people want some excitement now, especially the Bernie Sanders people and the Elizabeth Warren people want to have some more progressive appearances and substance. 
And the Biden campaign has come a certain ways by adopting many of the issues that the left wants and to unite the party. And I think this would help a lot if he does it this way. I think it's been those two, probably those two people, uh, Senator Kamala Harris and uh, Ambassador Susan Rice. But we'll see. We'll know next week. Yes, it'll be very interesting to watch. An interesting commentary as well with, uh, with Biden and Obama. Obama saying this week, my family is so proud to call ourselves honorary Bidens. Do you think he is looking to replicate the rapport he formed with Obama and seeking a governing partner whose loyalty is unquestioned, like some of Joe Biden's friends are quoted saying? Yes, I do believe there's a very strong alliance there between uh, President Obama and Vice President Biden because they had eight years of a fairly successful presidency and vice presidency. More could have been done, of course, from the progressive point of view, but they did quite a bit as well. And so they, uh, Obama looks at this as possibly picking up and where it was left off and going and continuing that legacy and those programs that are needed, updating it for today's needs, of course. The needs have changed considerably. If anything, more progressivity and issues have to be brought in that would help more American people. And so, yes, I think President Obama wants to be close to President to the future President Biden if he gets elected. And that's why that's they made that comment about <laughs> being honorary uh, Biden's, you know, that's a, that's a very interesting comment. Yes, well, we've certainly got to about three months to go until uh, the election. So between now and then, anything can happen. Peter Matthews, Professor of Political yes, Science indeed. of Cyprus College. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.